right, welcome back to Lag Demon Programming. I'm Bill Westlake, and this is the Compiler Design Course. I've done a little bit of cleanup <coughs> and fixed some things up with the pretty print. I'll go over that a little bit. Uh, it's really nothing uh, all that big. Um, here in uh, here in pretty print, we have the uh, tuple node. Uh, what I've done is just created a little loop. Uh, the first thing that we do is uh, Oh, that's not, that's the tuple node. I want the other tuple node, tuple type node, tuple type pointer. So I put out uh, this uh, in parentheses. I'll explain that in a minute, tuple space. Uh, then I get the, the size, the number of types, and I set up a, uh, a counter here. And the reason for this is because I want these in between. I don't want to post, put one on the very end after it all. So... Uh, it just rips through this. It uh, it calls accept on the node, uh, and then it it outputs a star if the le if we're still less than the length uh, in our count, and then it puts out a parentheses. And I made some changes to the other one as well. I'll show that in a moment. Uh, the type node just uh, outputs the type. That's fine. Uh, the uh, list type here uh, puts out a parentheses followed by doing an accept on the get list type which is that type uh, so it'll put out the type there and then uh, we put list on the end in a close parentheses um, what I did over here was let me go up here to the list uh, tuple declaration is I allowed it to just be this or in parentheses and the reason for being in parentheses is in case you need to include it in a record or another tuple or something where uh, it needs to be separated from the rest of the tuple. Actually, it's for nesting in a tuple. I did the same thing with a list. You can surround them with uh, here. It can either be type followed by the word list or it can be surrounded by open and closed parentheses. And I'll show you what that looks like here. Uh, we can create some pretty complex structures now. We can create a tuple that's an int followed by a float, followed by a string, followed by a tuple. <laughs> So we can embed tuples in there. Um, we can also embed lists into a tuple. And finally, we can embed custom types into a tuple like my record. And the way I did that was I created yet another uh, node called custom type. And it's a type that takes an ident. Uh, and the identifier has a, has a type associated with it. And uh, so does this. <clears throat> and it has an accept method. And so then over here in the parser, all I did was add uh, a simple type identifier to the possible kinds of types there are. <clears throat> and this then became, you know, new custom type, new identifier. And since it's only an identifier, we don't know what it is yet. We have to mark it as infer. And uh, we'll use uh, our visitors ultimately to figure out what actual type it is. This also allows things like forward referencing, which which uh, I'm allowing in this language. So that's how that works. And we can test it out here. Let me run a make real quick and make sure, yep, everything's there. So we run it on this. And you see here that uh, we've got a, a tuple uh, that's an int followed by a float, followed by a string, followed by a tuple here in parentheses that's an int string float followed by an int finally so the nesting of the parentheses this one has a list in it and another tuple uh, this uh, record now can hold a uh, another record type my record now that would be a bad idea in reality we can't allow that uh, our uh, uh, our visitors that analyze things will cite this as an error because this would create an endless, endless continuous type that would roll on and on and on and on uh, because these are, uh, <coughs> yeah, uh, we, we can't allow, well, we might be able to allow that recursion. We'll have to see uh, how we can handle it. These are going to actually be references, so maybe this will be a reference to it and it can have some non-existent value in order to stop the chain. Uh, but you can put a record inside of a, uh, a tuple list uh, or whatever name using that identifier type. And we can do the same thing down here. We'll, we'll check that out right now. We should be able to go down here and go uh, D of 
my record. And if we pile that, and D is of type infer, uh, which means I've got still a problem with my pretty print probably for this. Uh, enum. Yeah, it's right here. Uh, so uh, the ident is fine. We need to break this off. Come down here and go uh, n pointer get type pointer except this. That'll print all that out. Then we can do this part standard C out from the end of it, make, and there it is, D of my record. Okay, and we can do the same thing down here with having uh, uh, E uh, of tuple int star float star my record and that should compile and it does it's a tuple int float my record so it's picking it all up uh, we've got a language that's really coming together now we've got some interesting data types we have tuples we have lists we have records we have enumerations enumerations can contain any type including our records our enumerations and whatever we need uh, in the next series of videos that I do, we will be pulling that all together uh, and uh, and doing our visitors and so forth and uh, and getting this all arranged so that we can turn it into something that's executable. And uh, uh, so that's going to be it for this is kind of a short video. It's under 10 minutes. Uh, I just wanted to go over this cleanup. Uh, maybe I'll combine it with the uh, with the last video uh, and uh, we'll see. So anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.